Hello everyone, I'm Soxway Up, and welcome back to our first playthrough of High Rise City. Today's episode, we're going to focus on the supply chain, getting that all sorted out, getting the supply and demand equaled out so that we're not wasting materials, selling if we can, buying if we need to. Then we're going to learn about the research center. We're going to start doing some research, which is in turn going to increase the productivity of the entire city. Pretty fun so far. I'm enjoying the game. I think we'll we'll get you know deep into the city, and I'll do like a final thoughts, review, things I'd like to see changed, and some of the things that I, I love about it, and some things that I find very um, annoying. But let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is figure out why our wood supply is so low. Got to figure out what's going on with that. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the trade. I think it's working the way I think it is, all right, as I understand it, but we dive into this a little bit more, and we confirm that. There's other things in the city, not to kind of spoil what we discover in this video, but... So then we next we're going to kind of let the game catch up and see I'm just kind of watching right now the logs go up. We it did increase when we stopped that trade. I don't necessarily think that was the reason you can see it drop back down. So there's something going on in the city that I've totally forgotten about at this point that's causing us to use logs continuously. And then we found it over here. We are making furniture. We're not doing anything with the furniture. We just have these factories completely full. Or we're not actually, from what I can tell, using them at all. So we're just constantly pumping them out. We've got to figure out what we're going to do with those. We definitely need to set up a trade for those eventually. Then we're going to come on over here and we're going to decide, you know, we're not busting out enough logs. So it's time to increase the productivity of that. And by doing that, we're going to add a lot more lumberjack yards. Adding this road section for the new lumberjack area led me to believe that making roads is top down in this game. This looked perfectly square and then I adjusted the angle and realized it wasn't even close to it. So we had to demolish it, redo it, try to get it to line up a little bit better. Just some a little bit of things that seem a little confusing. Uh, when we were doing it from the side angle, it seemed perfectly straight, but then we redid it from top down and it looks a lot better. Road layouts kind of confusing in this game, but I'm getting the hang of it. Now that we have the new area set out, it's time to lay down some more lumberjack yards. But we also are taking a look at our carriers. We're seeing this one is constantly full. So we're going to reduce its reach so it can just focus on lumber. That way it won't compete with other areas. But by doing that, we also had to get a carrier established for the furniture warehouses as well. And that's uh, the balance of this game that it's it's keeps you on your toes. And I sat down, I started making this episode and I had a focus of getting to the research center and just expanding. And then I realized there's so much maintenance to do and just kind of getting used to that and figuring it out. I'm sure eventually I'll know the math and the, the way that you kind of organize things, kind of like how you do in Anno 1800. And it's just going to take some time. And if I tend to play games fast, I don't really take my time and read. If I would slow down and do that, a lot of this stuff would take care of itself and I would I figure it out a lot quicker. But I'm trying to get a little bit more patient as I make these videos and yeah, it's getting there. But at this point, I feel like we had enough. We wanted to move that carrier over a little bit so that it limited exactly where it was. And I was able to control the the reach of it a little bit better when it was centered in the area of all of the lumber that we're going to be producing. So now now that we have that set up, we're going to lay down a few of these buildings. Some of them aren't at 100%, but that's OK. I don't think we completely need 100% at this point. We're not really doing a min max run here. We're just really learning the game and growing it. And then eventually I kind of want to transition into improving the layout of the city, but we'll get there. We'll get there. But and then we'll start realizing that, you know, we have more than six buildings. So this local carrier is not going to be enough. We'll have to add another carrier here eventually to take care of the, all of the demand of picking up all the logs from the different lumberjack stations and, and balance it all out. Now that we increased the wood supply that much, we went back into the trade and started selling it. We wanted to set it at 50 is what I decided to put it as the happy point. I think we want to keep at least 50 around at all times. We'll see how that works out. If I believe that's how this is working. I should have slowed down to see, but you can see up there we have 80. So the capacity is completely full, so we might as well sell it. Once we start expanding, we will start going through those logs. So it might backfire in a little bit, but at this point, I think we're safe to do that. At this point, our fish supply is hurting. It's struggling big time. So we're adding in some roads here. We're going to add a few more fisheries to get that back up and catch up to where we're able to sell a little bit. Right now, income's around, it looks like jumping up to around 5,000, around fluctuating from like 3,000 to 5,000 a week. 
So we're doing pretty good there, but I wanted to get, get all of the happiness back up for all of the citizens that we currently have. The craftsmen are struggling a little bit with vegetables and fish right now. So struggling with some of the roads in this game. Terraforming, we're going to have to figure out to flatten some areas. I think that will help. We'll get into that later on. But here we want to add a few more of these fisheries so that we could then get that demand met and as well as produce enough to sell to make a little bit of extra money as we try to find another area for a fishery and we settle with just what we have for the time being. Next up, we decide to redo this area. I sped up the video a little bit here to make it a little bit easier to watch. We demolished everything. Then we start working on the road layout a little bit. I did pause the game because I didn't want those buildings to start growing back in before we got this layout figured out. I tried to cut through a little bit. Some of the collisions specifically around farms is where I definitely noticed struggling with the roads. I checked out the roadmap for this game. It's definitely a bug that they're aware of and they're going to work on fixing it. They just didn't want to fix it prior to the release while they had it in a solid state. So they're holding off until this release was out before they start fixing some bugs. It's pretty cool if you go to their website, you can eventually or the links on Steam, you can find the, the roadmap and the game has a link to it when you start the game as well. But struggling again to get those roads straight around the farms, I gave up on that bottom one. I added a few more up here. Every time we connect to this road on the left, that is a farm road. It seems to be a little bit harder to make it straight. The right side, it worked out pretty well. Here we're kind of showing adding in the services. So we had to add those back since we got rid of them. So we get a hospital there. We're going to jump quickly over to a police station and then finally back over and get the fire department back down get the neighborhood all of its needs as we then repopulate it and get that full of everything as well as religion. So we got all that going and then we started playing around with the props. And that started like this area we couldn't really populate. So I thought, well, maybe we'll put some of our own buildings down. And then I tried to close it out and tried to demolish it. And the building went on top of it. I'm not sure if the detailing props are ready. I couldn't demolish it either. I could not figure out how to get rid of that building. When you go into the menu, if you're very, very careful and read the screen, it does show you. It looks like we could use delete spacebar to object remove. I should have read that. We're gonna try it out next time we play the game and see if we can figure out how to remove those objects, but ah, uh, so we move on. Start looking at some of our government buildings and we decide to add the courthouse. Not completely sure if we will use that to set up any laws yet. I definitely want to go over that in more detail in, a, in its own video. But once we get this built up, it gets its uh, construction done. Then we can click on the building and check out the options that it has. You can open the menu for laws there. I feel like it should say open laws menu, open menu laws. And you can see all the laws that we can set that have weekly incomes or expensuries, expensury expenses. So they could make us money or lose us money. We'll dig into that later. So now we're going to start constructing this new area here. We're finally going to start building more of the employees. The next tier of citizens or the next tier of residential zoning that we can add here. And then we get an idea. We can start looking at what their needs are going to be. So we're going to need spices. We're going to need T-shirts, as I'm calling it. And it also looks like we need education and leisure as well. Some interesting things. I, I think the consumer goods are the most important to hit first, as I'm understanding. And then the other ones are nice to have. I'm striving to get 100% or close to 100% in all those before we move on to the next tiers. And then we're going to try to keep it balanced as we move on and progress in the game. We're going to keep adding different. I don't know what we're going to do, to be honest with you, but it's going to be a balancing act the entire time. Kind of just letting this game play or play this game as we go. Not a lot of plans, just learning all of the steps as we go. But we're adding in all the services that we can at this point based on the resources that we have available to us. We get to the leisure buildings. One of the things that I've I've noticed and I would say this is my first big complaint. Some of the other things are kind of bugs that they can fix. This is my first complaint. You'll see as we keep growing, leisure causes noise. That is fine, but I put a park down next to a church. I see no reason why that park can't be close to residential housing. As you can see there, we already have the sad face with the headphones on because they're not happy with the noise. Again, that's my first major complaint about this game, and I feel like it's something they could adjust and maybe rethink. Maybe they just need to decrease the noise pollution from those buildings. I definitely think it's silly to not be able to have an apartment complex and a park right next to it. I see that all the time in, in the world, at least in the US where I live. 
So here we start playing around, trying to get these roads to line up again. Some really weird things with that. And it might be the settings I have. I did notice as I was editing, editing this video that there is a button for free. I'm wondering if that helps you make the roads a little bit better. It seems like you can wind them and bend them and do whatever you want with them, but then once you connect to an existing road, it struggles a little bit. As we hit village, we hit 1,500 employees, which was group two of the residential areas. We got some research points, got some credit, which we're not using. The median lumberjack yard, the city carrier, the warehouse, the research center, iron. We also get a big water tower, the hospital, and some other things. We can make tools now if we really wanted to, but one of the big things I wanted to get to in this episode was research, and I'm glad that that unlocked at this point. And now back to the earlier complaints about the noise pollution. We are going to fix this or adjust where we put the leisure buildings to make sure that these people aren't cranky all the time from the noise being too loud. I they don't, We don't want unhappy citizens in our town as a mayor, but so we also start to think about it a little bit. I guess the noise pollution we can see here is pretty bad. At least the range on these leisure buildings is very large, so we can pull it away from the residential area, maybe tuck it into some commercial or the offices later on. But you can see here, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and move it. We're gonna play the game, get those people, make sure that their happiness is okay with the leisure that is around before we then put that second one back down later on. It takes a little bit, but then all of the warnings do dissipate. dissipate. They do disappear, so we're able to move on and, and find a new place and move on to the next feature that we want to build. And at this point, I was trying to find the research center. We mentioned we're excited about that. We wanted to get to that today. The research center, we're going to need 75 bricks. We, we never have that at capacity because we're, we're selling the second we get above that. So we go in here. We're going to adjust this to 75. I also notice the UI here is a little strange. It, it has required fields. It's not letting you, it's not letting you delete both the numbers. Maybe we can adjust that to scroll with the scroll wheel. That'd be kind of cool. So we increase that to 75. And then of course, you know, we're trying to focus on one thing and then the electricity becomes an issue. So we need to grow the electricity. Complaint number two. This is another thing that I don't know if it's a bug or if it's by design, but you can see here, once we try to line this up with the road, it absolutely, absolutely should fit in that corner. Maybe terraforming. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It seems like every single bend corner of the road is not happy when you put something down right up to it. It lets residential sometime, but some things I just need to try out. I think one of the main things I want to look at later on is how terraforming works. I tried to play around with it a little bit and it seemed a little buggy, but that's not really what we're looking at in this video. That's a rant for another video. Here, we're going to add a little bit to the garbage collections. We weren't at capacity yet, but I wanted to take care of it before we got there. So I added three more little nodes or little squares for that. As we continue our distraction from the research center, we decided to build our first elementary school. Find a good spot for it. The radius I'm impressed with as well. Now that we have that place down, it'll be pretty interesting to see how many buildings it actually satisfies by having one school down and how we'll have to handle that. And City Skylines again, trying not to compare the two. It seems like you have to lay down a lot of elementary schools to keep up with the demands. Be interesting to see how the balance is on this game. And going back to check how we're doing with the services for the new residential area, we noticed that leisure still struggling a little bit. So we go back and we add another one of these 60 plus noise pollution. It seems like the noise pollution is only close by. It doesn't go into its entire range, which is nice. That doesn't seem to satisfy them enough, but then I also realized I keep checking before the building is built. And then I move on and forget to come back. Yeah, I need to slow down a little bit. Then we had a few more services, try to get those needs completely satisfied before we go finally back to the research center and realizing we probably need a lot more brick than we have right now. We keep spending it, we keep spending it. So fire protection, you can see it recovered. Leisure still didn't quite get there. Um, just, I guess you need a lot of buildings somewhat in the in the proximity, but I, yeah, that one's a little, like I said, I'm a little, I'm a little salty about that one. Continuing down the needs trade, we decide to come in here and get rid of our vegetable and fish trade. We're not using those at all. We're gonna replace them with spices and t-shirts. And here I start realizing the resource composition page is telling you what's going on. The demand right now is only 0.66 spices. We should only need to import 0.66 if my theory is correct. Here the t-shirts are at 2.5, so we need about three. 
So we're going to put that up to three. We're going to see how that does. I think it's a little bit of an off balance because you don't always get the full supply that you're asking for when it comes in. So I eventually, you know, watch it for a little bit and see those numbers start increasing. It seems like they're slowly getting there. And that's another thing that percentage that that uh, of the consumption takes a little bit to keep catch up and balance out to where we really are. We can see there we did get our two and our three in and it didn't get them up to 100. I'm assuming they're either circulating around town, getting them all their spices delivered, or it just wasn't enough. And so eventually I do go back into the trades and increase it a little bit to make sure we have some capacity because we do plan on growing and expanding very quickly. So we're gonna need more anyways. Would you look at that? We finally remembered we wanted to add the research center and we have enough goods to do so right now. Let's just find a good place for it. And we settle along the cross the street from the courthouse and, and diagonal, I guess, catty corner from, from the courthouse. And this is our government area. I'm kind of thinking in my head close to the port and the fishery that completely, completely makes sense, right? While we're waiting for construction on the research center, we start looking into iron. We know we're soon gonna have to de develop our iron supply chain. And so now we're kind of looking where are our iron deposits? uh we're not anywhere close to an iron deposit so apparently we're gonna have to import the iron ore for a while at least until we can expand out to those areas and then we can get our own production going on but coal we can easily turn wood into coal so we can utilize that really quickly get that in we'll just have to import the iron ore so the research center is finally up and running and we get to look at it we finally get to see what it's all about and we pause the game for good measure because we're not really sure what we're looking at yet. So it looks like that button's been up there. It's just available to us now. And we see all of these things like lumber yard reach and the plantations and the bigger farm space. They kind of are what they are. The reach of the yumber, the yumber, I keep saying yumber, the lumber yards is increased. The production capacity of all of our farms is increased by 20% by doing the research on plantations. Going to definitely do that. But you can kind of see there in the description all the farms that are going to be available to us even though we don't have them all unlocked and then all the way to buff stack i didn't want to read anything about this stuff in case it gave away a little bit about the game i'm kind of discovering it as i go we do burn through all of our research points here i was really excited to open this up i thought it was going to increase productivity obviously and increase the income and speed everything up so right there our farms are increased by 20 percent productivity that's pretty nice it looks like our farms are going to have a maximum size of 150, so it's going to be increased by 10% of the capacity as well for those farms just by clicking that button. Very cool, so we'll get more there. Our farms will have less workers, we'll have improved fertilization. The lumberjacks are going to be researched twice to increase their productivity by 30%. The lumberyard facility is going to actually yeah, show back our woodcutters will increase by 30% the range of them so they can go farther to get trees. The woodcutters productivity is also increased. The production capacity we're going to bump up to level one is all we're going to be able to get there. And that's it. That's it. A bunch of productivity increases is what we got across the board. But we wanted to quickly jump over here and I wanted to add the medium lumberjack yards and realize we don't have iron. I think that's going to be a good place to end the video. We got our research center up. We got our productivity increased. We got a decent looking city, at least the first start of it. The middle, I'm not very, I don't like the clay area. Maybe we'll find another deposit and move all of our clay so we can build the city a little bit like I was envisioning. Some of the terraforming around the roads. I do know they have a bug reported about the heights of the curves as well in the roads, so hopefully we'll have a hotfix soon with some of these changes like this issue here. Zoom in a little bit more, it re-renders. Just some few cosmetic bugs, a few gameplay bugs, but it's early access and I get to play it. I get to play a new game. I'm loving it. I'm Socks Way Up. I'll catch you on the next one.